<laughs> you see, I didn't have a degree, so, mm -hmm. but I had the confidence, of the, a young man's confidence, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't have now. Mm -hmm. So I went to Chicago on a, on a, on a, on a charter flight, mm -hmm. and I checked into the hospital at the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I knocked on every door in Chicago asking people for a job. Mm -hmm. And the one I could sell was me and my history. Mm -hmm. And somebody gave me a job in the evening divisions. Okay. And that's, that guaranteed my return to Chicago. Okay, okay. And you were, you were teaching where? Oh, in uh, Southside. Southside. Uh, uh, no relevant place. Okay. But you were teaching art? Like yeah, studio art? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, a bit of art. It didn't matter. Okay. Really, it? And who were you teaching? It was, oh, look, the kids were the dregs of Chicago, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, there were three quarters black and the others were rejects in the Catholic school system. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was very, very basic, but it was mm -hmm. a wonderful experience of falling into the downtrodden in America. What did they make of you as this Englishman who'd been living in India and Paris? Something crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so exotic, you wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it, it was all fantasy. Mm -hmm. And so how long were you doing that for? A couple of years. Uh -huh. And what happened? What happened after that? I met my wife, a future wife, who was a woman called Jane Adams Allen. Okay. And this is your second wife? So. Yeah. yeah. And she was the grand niece of Jane Addams. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know anything about Jane Addams. Oh, the, she's the education reporter. She was one of the great activists all time. Of Hull House. Hull House. Mm -hmm. And a great admirer of John Ruskin. Yes. And Jane was from that family. Okay. And I fell into a very, very rich aspect of American culture. Absolutely. I was so fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, she's extraordinary. And it was a chemistry made in heaven. And we got to be art critic for the Chicago Tribune by accident. Okay. And we were not towing the party line. Okay, what was the party line? Harry Who. Okay. Uh, well, they were all right, but they weren't the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. And they weren't going to. They weren't going to. Uh, Um, Chicago is a very repressive city, mm -hmm. and it's very teen-minded, mm -hmm. and it's quasi-fascist. Uh, in what sense, quasi-fascist? Well, most you can't buck city hall, mm -hmm. and the social divisions in Chicago are so absolute. Mm -hmm. How are you encountering that as an art critic? Because, because the Nouveau Riche opened their own art museum, which uh -huh. was called the Museum of Contemporary Art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was on an ethnic basis, because uh -huh. it was alleged that the Art Institute was anti-Semitic. Oh, really? Huh. Now, whether it be true or not, I don't know. But the whole point is that it's a great indication of how you still have in Chicago that kind of precinct thinking, sure, which yeah. is defined by ethnic heritage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and daily kept his position mm -hmm. as the overlord by knowing this better than sure. anybody else. Where are you and how are you how are you making a living at this point? You'd stop teaching. You were working. I was teaching. Living, no, I was teaching part time. Okay. There's no living from being a stringer for. A newspaper. Mm -hmm. Even then? No. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. <laughs> Why? Because I think sometimes it gets slightly romanticised that it was quite possible in the 60s and 70s to make some kind of living. Oh, people are very romantic mm -hmm. about I mean, mm -hmm. people have a great tendency to be romantic. Mm -hmm. It's a way of deciding life is easier for your fathers than it is for you, mm -hmm. which is always an essential need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Human need. 
And so, when did, so you were writing for the Chicago Tribune, yes. what were the magazines that were you were looking at at the time? Was that oh, well, all the of them, all of them. I mean, mm. you know, Art the, in America, the, yeah, yeah, Art, Art News, News or... Art Forum. Mm. Oh, and it was Art Forum seemed to be primarily, was it on the West Coast then? or it No, moved? no, it already moved to okay. New York. Okay. And, it, and, and the person who established it actually was a strange man of English culture called John Copeland. Mm. Yeah who was an abstract painter of his time, yeah. who I remember the name in the past. He was a white South African. Mm. Uh, and uh, 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 he got hold of Art Forum and made it what it was. And we got mm -hmm. to be very good friends with John. Oh, really? And I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But were you writing for Art Forum then? No. Uh, didn't want to. Okay. How focused were they on New York, and to what degree were they covering? Well, they Chicago moved to New York. York. They yeah. moved from he moved it, or yeah. he took charge of it when it went to New York. Mm. And so he'd gone from San Francisco to LA yeah, to New yeah. York. Yeah, and uh, and uh, John got fired from Art Forum, which is like one of these great stories, which shows the creeping power of money that come to dominate all the important decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the Long Beach Museum got taken over by the collectors and it okay. stopped being a public not for profit. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. John, John wrote or got something to write a great article on mm -hmm. it and explained it. Mm -hmm. And they had lots of money. Mm -hmm. And I think Charlie Cowles was owned art form at that time, mm -hmm. got to be a dealer. Mm -hmm. And the price of not bringing the lawsuit was to get rid of John Copeland. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. he was so he was gone. So he reverted to being a photographer. Mm -hmm. And he was a very good photographer. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so no he wasn't. He went to Ohio and he was in charge of the museum the Akron Museum. Mm -hmm. And his big patron died, <laughs> and he got stranded in Akron, so he returned back to New York and lived out his life as a, as a photographer. But again, this was my education, mm -hmm. and it was all, you know, reality and aesthetics and mm -hmm. being able to swap opinion mm -hmm. without getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you got to Chicago and you started to encounter work like the Harry Who, like yeah. the Imagists, had you been familiar with that work before in the UK? No, no, because no. presumably it wasn't. Really hadn't travelled. I hadn't travelled. Yeah, yeah. And what was what did you make of it when you first encountered that kind of stuff? Well, it had its own dynamic, and you know, in a way, it was like I'm 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 not in any main, meaning to suggest they inherited influences, but that you had before then you'd had funk art mm. out of California mm. and it was a manifestation of being interested in images that you derive out of popular culture. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Now it had a Chicago twist, mm. which is to do with Chicago, mm -hmm. which California didn't have. Mm -hmm. But yeah, certainly interesting that neither funk nor imagism really got shown beyond those cities. I mean, it certainly wasn't being shown much in London in that period. Well, there wasn't enough money to be made out of it. Mm -hmm. Art only travels when this money gets mm -hmm. put into it. Mm -hmm. You know that better than I do, mm -hmm. given your history. I mean, mm -hmm. I've always been an outsider. Mm -hmm. I've always looked at the art world through binoculars. Mm -hmm. But so that's, but that's interesting because I remember you mentioning to me that we met before the, the New Arts Examiner, I think you alleged had a circulation second only to Art Forum at some point in North America? We, 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 we uh, uh, the key point in Examiner, which is a bit lost in history, mm. and the reason it's lost is also very interesting. Mm. Uh, Jane and I were unofficially blacklisted. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even get a job in mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Blacklisted by? Unofficially. Uh -huh, but Nobody unofficial. gave us a job. Okay. Not even part time. But what's your sense of why that was happening? Because we f fell out. Look, City Hall, 
city. Jane knew Chicago society very well, and she made a great statement once. Mm -hmm. She said, you don't have to go too far up the social ladder before you see the wall start to slope. <laughs> you know, there was a pyramid mm -hmm. <laughs> acts quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Chicago's not known for independence. It's mm -hmm. not known for intellectual adventures. Mm -hmm. it, you know, no, it's true, the images happened in mm -hmm. there, but, but I wouldn't call it exactly a kind of intellectual adventure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Chicago calls itself the second city, mm -hmm. which means it's insanely jealous of New York, mm -hmm. and it feels permanently bullied by New mm -hmm. York. Mm -hmm. And it is permanently mm -hmm. bullied, like, like, like Manchester's permanently bullied by mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a problem of any regional mm. urban centre that yeah. has got enough of its own culture. Yeah. Carl Sandberg will tell you all this, mm -hmm. you know, about you. We've read his poem, City on the Main. Yeah. Well, that tells you the whole thing. But what was your interest in Chicago? It doesn't well, sound we like started, no, but, but we had a niche in the art world and we mm. started publishing. Mm. So we were having our adventures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just like anybody. You know, when did you and start publishing? Seven, se October 73. Mm -hmm. That was the first issue of the yeah, art, exactly. and I had no money, and it was only done in the community, and it was mm -hmm. just a newsletter. Mm -hmm. And somehow we hung in, mm -hmm. which is an epic story. Mm -hmm. But we had to go to, we had to leave town to survive the new art examiner. Mm -hmm. So we took the absurd decision, was we'll go to DC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we kept the office in Chicago, and we controlled it from DC. Why was that? Because it was integrated into the community. Okay. Wait, wait the community in DC or the community? No, the community in Chicago. In Chicago. Okay. But why weren't you in Chicago? Because we couldn't get a job. Okay, I see. So you were well, working from Chicago, but you were no. working from DC, but you were publishing from Chicago. No, we had an office in Chicago okay. and we started collecting writers from publishing in DC. Okay. It was a two headed hydra. Okay. But so why did you have an office in Chicago at all? Because it was fixed there, and it, the, the, uh, we had ch ch Chicago subscribers and mm -hmm. and there was a cash flow. Sure. Now that would have dried up if we pulled the magazine out of Chicago. Yeah. Where was the cash flow from? Advertising and subscriptions and grants. And who was advertising? Uh, by that time, a number of people had started to advertise. But galleries? Yes. Okay. I'm intrigued because it's it's interesting to you position yourself as an outsider, and yet you also talk about being supported by Lanyon, about meeting Blake Tilson, about having advertisers. And well, I haven't, so spoken, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to you about the problems. Mm. I've indicated there were problems. Mm. Tell me about the problems. Well, they're just normal human problems. Mm -hmm. no, I, I don't understand. Well, people tend to get friendly with people. If there's mutual admiration societies, mm -hmm. there's not many societies that are intellectually free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, not being an educated person, mm -hmm. I had the working class fantasy mm -hmm. that when you got to be an artist, yeah. and I read the way sentence, mm -hmm. I remember the great line, women walking to and fro, talking of Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. So I had this picture of Bloomsbury, mm -hmm. where it was full of nice people, mm -hmm. wandering about, being sensitive and being sensitive to, to each other's sensitivities. Mm -hmm. But it's not like that. Mm -hmm. But I had to make my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what you were making as your what That's what I did with what Jane. No, mm -hmm. Jane was highly educated. Mm -hmm. So we were our own kind of little society, mm -hmm. but as we included other people, I quickly learned something. Mm -hmm. The real test of any person, and this is an old-fashioned idea, mm -hmm. you've got to publish. Talk's not good enough. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when you cross the line to the public domain, something happens. Mm -hmm. And that is a very important line. And in the early days of the New Arts Examiner, yes. what were you publishing? Like oh, Jack Burnham was not You ever heard of Jack Burnham? Yeah, he wrote the essay of Systems Aesthetics. Yes, mm -hmm. and Beyond Modern Sculpture, yeah. which was the first... He's a good writer. There was the first... Jack was very... No, Jack, Jack loved us. Mm -hmm. And he was writing for us when we were scruffy nothing. Mm 
Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the great articles we published was him, mm -hmm. and it was called Gotterdammerung in the Guggenheim, and it was mm -hmm. on voice. Oh, right. And it's one of the best articles mm -hmm. that ever published on voice. Mm -hmm. But you see, we never were important enough to get anybody to archive us. Mm -hmm. But do you have the full, I mean, how many yeah, issues? We have, well, we did 29 years of publishing. 29. Publishing how regularly? Monthly. Okay. I mean, it was a, it's a Hollywood story, but it's very hard for me to tell it. Mm -hmm. and how long were you in D.C. for then? How long well, were you going to come to that? I had 15 years in Chicago and 15 years in D.C. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so for the latter half of the, of the magazine, you were, you were running it essentially? Yeah, but we DC. got ill and retired back to Cornwall. Okay. I kept a low profile. Mm -hmm. Um, had a nice place and um, were quite happy to look at the trees and I returned to painting mm -hmm. and Jane got ill and so it was this life of that. When Jane died I was invited back by a friend to be a visiting artist and it's a small campus down south and I had no idea so I went there and I visited one or two other little local campuses. Mm. I had no idea. Anyway, I went to these places and I was kind of treated as, with, with great respect. Mm -hmm. I did not know that the examiner had become integrated into the extended society. And mm -hmm. every little campus I went to, there was at least one or two staff members that were still keeping new art examiners mm -hmm. and using them for teaching. Mm. Well, that was only because we were ahead of the game, so like, mm -hmm. we were doing early talks on issues on feminism or mm -hmm. uh, 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 gender or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I, Jane did too, but we realised that the artist is deprofessionalised. Mm -hmm. You realised that the artist is, is deprofessionalised. Mm -hmm. When was this? Oh, I first got the idea in St. Ives when I was a kid. Uh -huh. The art has been reprofessionalized now. No, they haven't. Really? No. How do you? How do you? Well, it depends what do you, you mean by professionalism. I would mean MFA is the kind. No, of... I don't think that's the way of professionalism. It's, that's my it's problem. One way of and that, that is one way, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's. So, but if you were to let me finish, I'd have said Sorry. that. Up until two or three decades, yes. as you know, it was by no means common for the MFA to be the terminal degree. I know, oh yes, I know. No, I, I and, know, yeah, yeah. And, and now there are, you yes. know, some hundreds of thousands of MA, MFAs being produced in North America every year. Well, they're going to do PhDs and PhDs. And and PhDs. PhDs yeah, but it's PhDs. nonsense. Mm. It's a nonsense. But I would, so what I'm, I'm not arguing yeah. that that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm suggesting yeah. that that is a mechanisation. Mechanization well, it's a mechanism. Of producing. Yeah, but, 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 but I have yeah. a different idea of being mm -hmm. professional other than the kind of people mm -hmm. that they now call professional. Mm -hmm. Well, that may be. But, uh, I, I probably have a romantic mm -hmm. idea about it, but I think it a, means you have a confidence to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that has been hammered out of most graduates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that's professionalization, mm -hmm. I call it Eastern Finishing School, mm -hmm. which doesn't give the intellectual confidence to think about the visual arts with its history implications and all factors that feed into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, I completely agree. Thank but you. But I, what, what I think, though, it's pretty, um, it's pretty clear to me that in the last 15 or 20 years, one of the major stories about the production of art has been the story of professionalisation in the art world. Yes, but who's talking against it? Not many. Now, there's one or two. Mm. Now, class warfare mm -hmm. always usually filters in to culture one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Either side. I'm, I'm not making a moral judgment. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to, so it tends to give people a cause. Mm -hmm. So whatever the cause on the right or the left overrides certain considerations and it becomes a safety mm -hmm. seat. Mm -hmm because you belong to a certain kind of evangelicism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, my whole life, I have only fought for freedom of expression, the right to have an opinion, and if you're going to share your opinion, you have to be absolutely honest and tell people why. And mm -hmm. to me, that's what a critic is. Mm -hmm. And I don't see many critics around anymore, and they're not allowed to be around mm -hmm. anymore, because our culture is waning. I would agree. Our culture is, is, is getting paralysed. But so if we could go back a little bit, take a few steps back. You mentioned Jack Burnham. Yes. Um, I think you published Peter Sheldahl as well. Yes, yeah. Who are the other people who are your most regular contributors over those years? Well, Janet Coplis is now writing the history. Okay. And uh, uh, um, or to put it another way, do you remember? Oh, oh, Eleanor Hartney. Okay. Who's Eleanor Hartney? Eleanor Hartney. She's written three books, and I think she's a very good art critic, and she, had, she was from the Midwest. You see, we only had Midwest people that we would meet. Mm. Now, we had an awful lot of people that, uh, you know, they're various names, but, but mm. you know, they're like now academics all mm. over the place, but mm. you wouldn't know of them because mm. it's, they're not on the five-star level. Mm. But that kind of changed a little bit when we went to DC, because mm -hmm. DC is only three hours from New York. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, so I, could go up, I could go up and down the mm -hmm. and, and uh, So you were visiting New York regularly through when, like the 80s and 90s? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, what what now, do you yeah. think of what was going on in New York at that point? Well, I mean, I was there when the whole uh, Soho thing happened. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, New York, is now spinning in on itself. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's losing its. Uh, 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 it, it's become trendy. And, mm -hmm. and, and, it's losing uh, artists, really. What? Oh, Jerry Saltz was. Uh, 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 um, I think we were the first people to publish him. Oh, really? But he was a kid in St. Ar in, 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 in Chicago. Okay. But yeah, sorry, you were talking about New York and Soho. Well, it, 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 well I mean, uh, it's like trendy, you know. Mm -hmm. but it was a surge, it was a surge. To what degree did you see the New Arts Examiner as being focused on Chicago or the Midwest, or to what degree was it an international? Well, it, uh, <laughs> we were like a franchise. <laughs> mm -hmm. In what sense? Well... We like the idea of local editors. Mm -hmm. and this is why um, we can talk about this later because mm -hmm. this is to do with Cornwall mm -hmm. and Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that I think there's a very interesting relationship between good criticism and and making art. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very close, if not symbionic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Could you expand on that? But yeah, I can remember what Herbert Reed said once. Mm -hmm. I quote from memory. Mm -hmm. He said, "The critic is yeah. not like the artist historian who dissects a caviar." He said, "The issues are dead. The critic has to be a poet and dream and share the dreams of poets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with artists." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Is that still a definition of the critic you would want well, to Well, that's his definition, and I'm quite mm -hmm. happy to quote it for the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. I don't make definitions, mm -hmm. but I know when I have interesting conversations. Mm -hmm. And, and I, one way or the other, I picked up some academic friends who are highly...